Hello and welcome back to Climate TV. I'm Eduardo Gonsalves. Today I'm joined by Sharon Burrow. She's the General Secretary of the International Trade Union Confederation. Sharon, thanks very much for joining us. First of all, why is climate change now a big issue for the trade union movement? Well, there are no jobs on a dead planet. This is much more than a slogan for us. We're already seeing the uh, loss of lives and livelihoods with extreme weather events. And indeed, you know, workers are on the front lines of climate change, the negative impact, but also as we make the transition, the energy transition, the uh, change in the nature of the use of technologies, the, uh, the, the zero carbon, zero poverty ambitions, for the future, then the opportunities mean workers are on the front lines again with their communities. So for us, it's core business. Climate change is an imperative. We can't uh, continue to live in a world where inequality and poverty are becoming uh, entrenched as systemic uh, outcomes of a model of business that is failing us on both fronts. So zero carbon, zero poverty, the opportunities are clear. But of course, the challenges are also significant and we want to be part of that design mix because it must be a just transition. Now, the argument about taking action on climate is often one around jobs. What, in your view, is the opportunity in terms of creating jobs in a low carbon economy? Well, if you look at uh, the opportunities, then as the trends for people uh, uh, become more and more mega cities, mass transit, there's massive jobs in low carbon or, or, or zero carbon mass transit that will be uh, part and parcel of future. If you look at our construction industries, it's the same deal. If you look at uh, logistics, um, again, we have to look at different ways of managing logistics on a, on a zero carbon uh, energy base. And of course, if you look at the transition in energy itself, then there are many, many jobs in the investment in renewables and we're already seeing that. There are hundreds of thousands of jobs being created in places like Germany where they do have an, a renewable energy plan. We've seen uh, the, the annual investment increase in renewables to the point where now it's uh, outstripping that in fossil fuels. That's the creation of new jobs. They themselves have new supply chains. So take, take an industry. We say it very simply that the industries of 2015 will be the industries of the next decade and the decade after that to the end of the century. They'll change. Their energy mix will change. The use and reuse uh, of materials so our workplaces become green waste centres, that's an imperative. So yes, there are challenges and we want a just transition. In fact, I demand respect for the fossil fuel workers who've brought us the prosperity of today. They must be assisted to uh, uh, upskill, to be redeployed, or whether they're older workers, uh, then they would want their uh, pension secured. And they must have investment in their communities to renew those communities. But a just transition makes all of that possible. Um, as we move from a, a high carbon economy and fossil fuel industries and so on to a low carbon economy, there's obviously a form of transition there and redeployment of jobs. How would you say that that's best managed? I'm very frightened that we've already lost an orderly exit from coal. So our core demand for coal miners is that they're given the security of the time frame in which they can uh, be assured they'll have uh, jobs, that their pensions are secured, and that they're uh, looked after in terms of redeployment and that there's money into their communities for renewal. But for other fossil fuel companies, for energy companies, they face a choice. They can actually uh, set themselves up for the transition. They can have a plan that has 2020, 2030, 2050 targets to get to that zero carbon future. And as they transition to renewables and reduce their uh, dependence on fossil fuels, then they actually got a natural capacity to transition their workforce. It will take some skills development, it will take capex, but we would say to the investment community, engage with those companies, make sure their plans for uh, uh, decarbonisation are actually transparent, that they're consistent with the two degrees impact, but at the same time, don't walk away from them because they will give us the chance for both a just transition and a stable transition in terms of energy that the economy needs. 
we want to be at the design table, dialogue with governments, with employers. It's an imperative if the transition's to be just. Um, how, in your view, is the trade union movement globally embracing or addressing the climate change challenge? Where there's dialogue and an understood plan and people can see themselves and their children as part of the future, then it's possible to affect what we call a just transition. The big problem is that governments have been too slow, many employers have been too slow, industry sectors have simply not considered an alternative future. So they've thrown money and time into lobbying governments not to change, to maintain the status quo. And the very big fear for us is that that generates then fear in communities, which creates a backlash. The only way we're going to make this uh, transition, if it's uh, based on dialogue, if all the stakeholders are part of the mix, and if it's a just transition where everybody can see a future. There's no doubt that many of our children will work in energy. They just won't work in fossil fuels. This year, obviously, we're going to be seeing the major international climate conference. Uh, what's your message to policymakers and to the people who are going to be there negotiating the deal? We've already delivered our three top lines uh, to the uh, uh, president of the COP, Minister Fabius. We want, of course, uh, to see increased ambition from governments and we want to see action before 2020. We want to see that they agree to the uh, mechanism for review. If it's not mandatory in the uh, agreement, that there will be a uh, review of ambition, a review of progress, then the, the INDCs or the national pledges that governments are making will lead us simply at this point to a three, three and a half, four degree world and that's devastating. So we understand we've got to make a start, but the elements there of action before 2020 increased ambition from some governments who can do better and indeed uh, the review mechanism. The second is actually around the financing. This is a matter of trust as well as a matter of, uh, of imperative. The poorer countries need to see that this is a shared uh, ambition, that it's, uh, it's not something that uh, wealthier countries are saying, well, we're not going to do anything, but we're going to demand of you everything. So the financing uh, um, agreement, the 100 billion, has to be delivered and it has to be credible. And for workers, then I've already indicated it's a just transition. And if the leaders don't put the language back into the operational agreement, where it has been now for many years with the support of a lot of governments, then it will be an anti-worker agreement and we'll say so. Finally, Sharon, um, in your view, how can trade unions and businesses work together to ensure there's an orderly and ambitious uh, transition to a strong and prosperous low-carbon economy? Well, companies who uh, see the future, they will engage in dialogue if they want to realise that and realise it quickly because when workers see their place in the future, when they have uh, a, uh, a share of the dialogue and indeed an acceptance of responsibility for an alternate future, then it will happen. Where employers ignore their workers, where there's no uh, commitment to uh, the, uh, the redeployment, the security, from income security to uh, job security, it will be a disaster. We're already seeing communities against communities. And I make the point that in the union movement, we have all the actors. We have the climate warriors and we're proud of them. I would count myself as one of those. We have the new workers, the workers who are in new forms of uh, renewable energy or enterprises that are, indeed are uh, carbon neutral. And we're organising those. And we have the workers in the fossil fuel industries who deserve our respect. They deserve an absolute recognition that they've bought us all the prosperity of today. And we want all of those workers to be part of a just transition. Sharon Burrow, thank you very much indeed. I was speaking to Sharon Burrow there, the General Secretary of the International Trade Union Confederation. That's all we've got time for today. Do join us again soon. From everyone at the Climate Group, goodbye.